what I what I was hoping to do is have people reflect on the conversations and offer, and I want enough time for around let everybody have a have a a, a statement of of you know a takeaway something you you thought about or learned. Um, we're to me we're clearly going to have to have these conversations go. Our social access didn't even really talk about people, and we haven't we need to do that. We haven't talked about disruptions. There's clearly an intersection of the topics that we've discussed throughout the day that I think we've laid out what they are, but we haven't covered the intersections. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like we've stayed, we stayed well focused on the future, but we, we haven't gotten there, you know, for, for how these pieces fit together. Um, and, and that, that feels like a big hole to me. And I, I don't, I don't think we another 20 minutes of conversation is going to get us there. It's going to take some reflection. You don't think we can fix the world in 20 minutes? I, I have my plan, but, um, <laughs> but what, what it seems to me is that there, there's things that, that in, in the stack of conversation, we, we, it's, it's whack-a-mole. And so, right. We're like, Oh, we need re better regulatory environment, but wait a second, you know, Every, our, I'm not going to own, hanging on my desk, I'm not going to own anything in the future. Oh, but wait a second, things are too complex for me to patch it. And so we, we've got this, you know, my sort of takeaway, and I've, I've been trying to be more passive and, and listen and absorb, is that there's an interconnectedness between these issues that are coming. We all see very clear this increasing digitization, right, to Tim's point, I don't think anybody even recognizes how much data is being stored on them. We're all technologists. I, I think we are grossly underestimating how much data we are leaking into these companies that control that. And, and they don't want us to know uh, because it's a lot. And so all these pieces are, are fitting together in ways that the, to me, the purpose of these conversations is to bubble them up and expose them. And then, point the places where we go, ooh, as a group, and you're like, ah, that's Rob, gonna hurt. Rob. Yeah. Clarification. What is the what is the lie you were referring to? The sorry? You said that is a lie, or what is the lie you're referring to? Oh, that um maybe uh I could scroll backwards. <laughs> I was looking at his own transcript. That's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my, my voice is not on my own transcript, which is a, which doesn't help me in the least in this case. Oh. I'm recording it off my so audio, I, not my, not my, not, not, not a monitor like of it. To, I'd like but, to point but, out that Apple changed its its rules for applications and the information applications I have to provide users, and uh, Facebook got real huffy and didn't want to do it, and finally did it. the The change went in December seventh. Right, but. Well, Google that, that, has I mean, not we've, updated we've, any application since December 7th. They I haven't said they're not following it, but they haven't updated it. So even just that little bit of letting the consumer know what's being collected in apps is pretty uh, radical. So, so I, I would ask, you know, um, you know, I just did mine effectively. I would love to hear people's you know, sort of a, a takeaway or where, you, what you want more discussion about. Um, you know, we have just enough time for everybody, if you're thoughtful about it, to, uh, to five give minute some inputs limit. and then we'll keep going. <laughs> four minute may limit, perhaps four to five minutes. Uh, not even in yeah. 30 seconds. Three minutes. <laughs> yeah, we have 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes total remaining uh, uh, for this. So you got 90 seconds at best. Got to be pithy. <laughs> Uh, Who wants so to go first? I will. Uh, I want to get back to what I'd like to talk about is the stuff that Ajit was talking about is how that how we can influence uh, the regulatory landscape uh, and get common sense regulations and while not being huge uh, corporations, especially in the current uh, political government atmosphere. Vote. That's just next. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll follow on because I think 
there are a couple of things that we did a tangential flyby, but in many of the cases, talking about monitoring and logging when we were talking about security, now the issue of permissioned or permissionless use of data and management of data, what we really are talking about in an, a great sense is the, the, the big tool that the consumer, the end user of these systems and services has to work with on the vendors and on regulatory is transparency, is visibility. It's not radical to the extent of, you know, everything has to be in the open, that's not going to work. But to the degree that transparency, data transparency, knowing what's being captured, having access to it under the right conditions and using radical transparency as a way of preventing the lie or the obfuscation of, of a well-entrenched corporate entity is the right, it's the right hammer. And it comes in different shapes and different sizes, but I would point to that as the mechanism of choice for the next 10 years. Uh, so, so Richard, in terms of data, data provenance, um, and this is where generally I, I like a very light touch on the regulation side, but here, because the folks that are influencing regulation, they are solely um, or mostly, they are heavily represented by the big, big players. A lot of the regulation that gets proposed does not affect their bottom line. If anything, that actually ends up building barriers. So it would be nice to have consumer advocates talking about data privacy, privacy, absolutely. Those regulation. Because even if you're saying agree. that you know we need transparency, if you are so yes, transparency and you know data and, and the reason the way you can enforce that at what goes in and what goes out. But imagine the case if you're a vertically integrated. A company like say Facebook or Google, right? You don't have any view into what goes in and goes in, goes out. You know, who there's very little oversight on what Google connects, collects as consumer data and what Verily, which is another company under the Google conglomerate, collects as patient data. Right. Uh, so because there is no there, there is vertically integrated stack and data is getting plumbed in and out of different products within the same company, um, unless you have consumer privacy representation in authoring this regulation, it's, it's okay. just all that regulation is doing. It's keeping out innovation. Uh, well, I don't think anything I said would contradict what you just... No, absolutely. No, we are in agreement. Good. Thank you. I, I, I'll go real quick. Mine, mine's pretty short. Um, I don't think Kubernetes is going to solve for the edge and um, uh, micro, micro cates or something like that might be an opportunity in certain areas, but Kubernetes will not be horizontal edge. Um, and I think, um, and maybe this is just me, uh, maybe I worry too much about the, the, um, the broader solution when sometimes we can't affect that to, that to answer. But I see too much of our debates and conversations are around the notion of fixing the symptom rather than the root cause. And um, the root causes are we allow free software into our developer organizations and we allow our developers to feel like heroes, like they own the world. We write books about it. The root cause is that the software we allow free into our organizations is sponsored by companies who will benefit by you liking that software, not because you're buying it from them, but because you will use their services where only they can solve the problem for you at, at a cost effective level. Um, so those are the real problems, not what technology we adopt. We could talk all day long about value and when somebody should adopt and, and how much stuff actually happens in IT and doesn't, what kind of scale is required. Those are just business decisions that happen all day long. 
and we should all be good at them. That's, that's not the issue. The bigger issue is the dynamic of the market and what kind of pressures it puts on us. When you walk into an organization and you find out that, oh no, I can't adopt that technology because I need developers to join and join, to, developers will only join because I'm using X, you know you've got problems. Anyway, off the soapbox, back to mute. I, I'm gonna this add, is the uh, official soapbox time, so. I was just going to say that Mark, Mark just answered everything for me, so I have nothing to add now. Thank you, Mark. So, so I'm going to get, I would like to add. Uh, okay. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Don. I was just going to get up on my soapbox for a minute and uh, and give a, a, a 60 second self serving speech. Um, I mean, I'm interested in, in sort of, uh, you know, what does my job look like in 2030, right? If I'm, if I'm a overpriced consultant to large enterprises, um, uh, what are the things, what are, what are the architectures? What are the design paradigms? What are the technology trends that um, I'm gonna be standing in front of uh, CIOs and CTOs and uh, executive VPs telling them, telling them, you know, you know, trying to explain just how smart I really am um, by by giving them the buzzwords that they think they need. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we we all have jobs to do, and our jobs are to support the enterprises that we engage with. Um, and I'm really interested in understanding sort of what those macro trends are that are going to be important to those people trying to run those businesses in 2030 um, when I'm even older and grayer. So there, that's my speech. I just, to, Don just mentioned, uh, was talking about architectures. So we talk about having good regulatory frameworks before. For me, that's the most important thing. And just to go back to Washington, D.C., Having a, the, a strong constitution that is just key here. What's the basic rules that we care about? What are the incentives and what's going to be built upon? That's what matters most importantly. So basically, what are the incentives for, for companies to grow? What are the comp incentives? <clears throat> what are the rules of the road? And are, is there something that we should be changing? So why I'm talking about such broad things is because um, for, I, one of the things we didn't really talk about, we mentioned briefly, but innovation, if that's really important, let's focus on that. If profits are important, let's focus on that. If we don't want, want big companies, let's focus on that. Um, these are all, what are the first principles we care about? Um, just, we had even mentioned about AWS being a 800 pound gorilla. That's dominated a lot of conversations in the past. Um, we didn't mention anything outside the United States. That's things we have to talk about. Um, these are just big issues. Um, but for me, the big, one of the biggest things is that it's the, what are the, economic incentives so that we don't need to have regulations. Because we heard a lot of people talk about the fact that they don't, don't like regulations, but you need to have an arch economic architecture and or technology architectures to be promoted so that going back to going back to DARPA and Vince Cerf, they created a a technology architecture that became self-fulfilling in terms of the social architecture of how every in business architecture about how everything else worked. So I don't even know what that you guys have heard about how the um, uh, communications is. I don't even know the right, right term, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, the this uh, communication social structures, communications is uh, mirrors technology. Hmm? All right. Um, 
Uh, is there anything else you want to add, or can I have a turn on the soapbox? Well, I guess you may as well. That's uh, that's the answer. Um, what, what I want to add, perhaps, is um, bringing up the other side of the coin. So we, yes, we, we we talked about regulation. We talked about what we can do as technologists to help and protect the consumers. Uh, we, we've talked about uh, on the on the security side or how we can protect end users. We're missing the education part of that. How, how, because, because if we just help them, then when we stop helping and helping them, they're, they're helpless. If we educate them, if, if we, if we, if we add to the education for the end users to protect their privacy, their security, uh, to be aware of the the data protection implications. If we make consumers and small businesses aware of the implications of, say, lack of regulation or the implications of uh, centralized control over the cloud, then the kind of regulations that, that Lawrence is talking about, I, I believe that would be emergent from that set of education. Minute is over. So. so I'll go next. Um, so I'll I'll try to um, apply. Well, I should say I try to apply what um, my ideals to what I do day to day. And it's really hard. I find that I fail at it quite a bit. So the the product management that I think that. Um, that uh, my customers deserve and the operations that I think my, our, uh, my customers deserve, I tend to uh, never hit the ideals within my own company of what my expectations are. Um, the management of our assets, which more and more today are digital assets, um, data related, um, whether it be video, audio, text, um, you know, are, are critical and actually to a large extent other than employees is the, the basis of our business. Um, and I struggle with keeping those assets uh, available to all the integrated tools or semi-integrated tools um, that we use as a company to make our, to be able to serve our customers day to day. Um, and uh, and I, I hope that what government, business, and nonprofits working together in some form or fashion, um, which more and more today they are, that we find a meeting in the middle, which makes that struggle that I have easier, uh, both not only for myself, but also um, uh, as a, a leader within my company, but also for my customers so that they can be better served, not only by my company, but um, other companies. So, off my soapbox. Wow, everyone's thinking of what I just said. That must have been awesome. I'll mic drop. So, so, so Sean, I'll, <laughs> I'll just add real quick. This is not meant to be on a soapbox, but what you are addressing, um, what you're trying to address, rather, I don't know if you read Lawrence Lessig's book, um, Code and Rules of Cybersecurity, but it actually builds up top on what's known as the pathetic dot theory. It talks about different forces that act um, on to influence uh, what, what, the, what you're acting upon. Um, take a look at that. Uh, it used to be online, but you, know, you can pull it off Kindle. Um, really nice constructs built on. And it's not just about mediation between control and hair control. Could be internal uh, GRC controls, or it could be regulatory controls. But between that and the software tool set itself, uh, which Lessig calls architecture, uh, and of course, you know there are norms, etc. So there are four basic forces that act upon it. Take a look at that, um, and I think what most was the title again? I'm sorry. You said what was the title again? Code and what? Uh, it's, it used to be when it was, you know, pure hard copy, it used to be known as, uh, he used to teach over at, at MIT. Um, it was called Code is Law. Um, the book was called Code 
rules of cybersecurity. Now it's called code version two. Um, just just look up Lessig, L-E-S-S-I-G, Lawrence Lessig, that is. So just look up Lessig and code or code is law. Um, they'll give you, you know, and I'm happy to actually share the URL with you as well. Um, sure. But yeah, most just drop in the chat. That'd be awesome. Happening where people try to attack and skin the cat, so to speak, with either pure software or pure regulation. And, you know, you have to have a good, sensible mix of both, whether that's within the enterprise, if you're talking about regulation, regulation within the enterprise, of course, it's, you know, policy control, change management, et cetera, uh, versus mm -hmm. pure software tooling. Um, so it'll help you mediate and, and walk that thin line. Okay. Cats hate it, by the way, when you do that. I'm sorry, what was that? Cats hate it when you do that, when you skin them. <laughs> Just bringing it up. No, I'll definitely check it out. Thank you. Great. And I'm, I'm back on my primary machine, if y'all can hear me. Why are you monitoring us from your little bot? It's really freaking me out. He's not because staring straight ahead. No, it's, it's nothing that exciting. Uh, <laughs> I opened a Zoom. I opened Zoom uh, in the background, and uh, it freaked out my computer. And it took me yeah. about five minutes to get it to come back down. Uh, who? I. I mean, I want. I want to do a roundtable. I also we're going. We're going to start losing people, and it's been four hours. Um. So before anybody else drops, thank you all for the time. Four hours is a huge block of time to discuss uh, these items. And I feel like they're really important and worth the discussion. Um, but it's also a lot. So thank you. Um, Thanks for the forum, Rob. I, I've, I've learned a lot. My pleasure. Um, and we will, keep, we will keep coming back to it. There's a lot of suggestions for cage matches on some of these topics virtual cage matches, I'm assuming, and, um, and you know, insights and, and reflections. Um, I'm trying to capture these as, as ongoing conversations. Um, and if y'all want to talk one-on-one -on, -one on this and reflect on it with me, um, I will happily do that, even record it and put it in a podcast because I feel like what we covered today um, needs more discussion. So thank you all. I appreciate that. I hope that you were as intrigued by the ideas that we shared in this uh, summit. And because we've been continuing to have the discussions, I would love for you to be a part of it. I really came away thinking that the future is going to be hard <laughs> and disrupted in ways that, that we don't intend it to be disruptive. The pace of innovation, how we're selling things, uh, those are going to have really significant impacts on how things are, are stitched together. And that's what we're going to continue to explore with the Cloud 2030 team, uh, both looking at it strategically and looking for disruption points and influence points. And then tactically, where we just talk about news of the day and, and what big issues uh, we're facing in the moment and then connecting that to the future. Please join us. Um, these conversations are really deep. They're unlike anything else that I've seen in industry uh, where we have an open round table with a very forward-looking non-vendor uh, perspective. So please join us, and uh, I'll see you there.